the new government has adjusted Tainapora's Pora's compensation for inflation as recommended by the High Court earlier this year. Mr Pora was declared innocent of the 1992 rape and murder of Susan Burdett, a crime he was arrested for in 1993 and cleared of in 2015. Justice Minister Andrew Little today announced Mr Pura would get an extra $1 million on top of the $2.5 million he'd already been offered for spending two decades in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Taina Pura's support team since 2009 has included lawyers Jonathan Krebs and Ingrid Squires and former policeman and private investigator Tim McKinnell. I spoke with Mr Krebs and Mr McKinnell earlier today and asked them how they felt to finally have resolution after all this time. It is a great thing. It's, it's the end of the road for us. I mean, we started this in September 2009. Um, Tim and Ingrid and I have become like brothers and sister uh, throughout this process. And, you know, it's an emotional moment for us. It's, of course, an emotional moment for Tana. But, it, uh, yeah, it's the end of this road. Should you have had to have worked so hard <laughs> over so long, Tim? No. No, absolutely not. The facts on this case speak for themselves. Um, Justice Hanson's report makes it pretty clear how obvious it was. Um, it should never have been as difficult as it has been. And so one of the great frustrations for us, and we're trying not to focus on the frustrations today, but one of the frustrations for us is that uh, there has been no desire to find out what went wrong. Nobody's looked at it. Nobody's. There's no inquiry in place to find out what went wrong, so horribly wrong. So that's sad. Jonathan, you have great faith in the law. I you do have great faith in the law. I've said that before, and I'll say it again. I'll say it again today. Uh, occasionally, though, uh, things do go wrong. And where uh, my faith is in the law is tested is when we've had the fight that Tim just described over the last eight and a quarter years uh, until today um, to put something right. That's where there needs to be another layer to our justice system, a gloss on it, so that we, nobody ever has to go through this process that we've done again with such incredible resistance. And what would that layer be? How would there be an effective kind of fourth estate on the justice system? Well, I think the case is pretty clear for Criminal Case Review Commission. A, a, a valve, a release valve for when it does get it wrong, because our criminal justice system does get it wrong, not very often, but when it does, it's catastrophically wrong. And so a Criminal Case Review Commission sits to one side, it's independent, properly resourced, and it has powers to go and collect evidence. So something like that, that, that the Labour government has talked about, um, is desperately needed. There are examples in other countries of such a commission, and... Uh, you know, it won't, wouldn't take much to go and investigate those and tailor them as necessary to fit our particular country with our particular level of resourcing. And we're very hopeful that uh, this government will look to uh, take those steps, make that investigation and, do, and to do so quickly or commit to it quickly. Two final questions, Jonathan. Uh, Tim described this as a catastrophic miscarriage of justice, and it was. A man who did not do this crime has spent more than half his life in jail, and he went to jail as a teenager. Why did it take so long to get to this sum of money? Others have described it as the worst example of a miscarriage of justice in our country's history, measured by uh, the extent of it, the duration of it, uh, the age of, it, uh, age of Mr Pora when he went inside. Why did it take so long? Well, uh, we, we started investigating it in 2009. Uh, before then, the justice system had run its course. There had been an appeal, uh, and that was the end of the matter. Uh, I, I don't know what else could have been done. There possibly were things that could have been done, but I'm not going to uh, lay the blame at anybody's feet. As I don't think there's anybody's feet it couldn't necessarily be blamed at. But once we started, uh, the length of time, the eight years, that should have been much shorter, as Tim just said. We shouldn't have met the resistance that we met at every single step. It's fine to test the case, but it became blindingly obvious at an early stage, and still the process, uh, we were dragged through this process. So I was listening to the media conference before and Jonathan said, without you, Taina Bora would still be in jail. That's a statement of fact, isn't it? Uh, it's a very real possibility. Or if not me, then if somebody else hadn't come along, it needed, it needed a great deal of work. You came along? Well, <laughs> right place, right time, yeah. It was, um, it's, you know, I guess it's, it's an emotional day for us. It's taken so long and we've, we've finally got there and um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that Taina trusted me and us to, to do this for him. How is Tainer? He's good today. <laughs> he's really good today. Um, I spoke to him. Uh, you know, he's just describing his himself as uh, happy, free, and warm. So that's um, it's nice to see. He's a different man than when I first met him. That's for sure. He was in orange overalls and custody behind bars in a prison, and now he can do what he wants.
extraordinary story, uh, Jonathan Krebs and Tim McKinnell. Uh, thoughts too to Susan Burdett's uh, family. Her brother Jim has been a real supporter of Tana Porus. Innocence, uh, there has still not been anyone convicted for her murder. The case remains unsolved and we will look at that uh, over the coming weeks.